God commands you to endure to the end. It's not a, please try your best. He says, you must endure to the end. And so here's where you pray, Lord, give me what I need. And what I need is assurance that I will endure to the end. And if you say it, I'll believe it. Eventually, here's what pain does. Pain brings every human being to a crossroads where it's either going to lead you down one path or another. There's only two options. Pain's going to lead you down this way or this way. The first path that pain will lead you is to hopeless despair. Pain, if it doesn't stop, that's where it ends. There's no hope in sight. And I have no help from anyone. Despair is next. Or it leads this way. This way is spirit-filled grit to keep stepping forward until the end. That's it. There is no plan three. When you look at the scriptures and you look down through history, those are the two choices. Despair or endurance. That's it. This word grit, um, if you were to look at it, look for it in your Bible, uh, you'll find a bunch of words that mean the same thing. Let me give you a couple of those words. You'll find endurance, perseverance, steadfastness. You'll find resolve. You'll find courage and you'll find boldness. When you, they're all in the same sphere. If you were to put them all together, the best word that I could find was the word grit. If you were to look in psychology textbooks, here's a definition you'd find for grit. Tell me this isn't the passage that we're reading. Grit is courage and resolve to endure. That's what we're reading. Strength, check this out. Strength of character to persevere through obstacles in order to achieve a long-term objective. Look at verse 29 and tell me this isn't grit that they're asking for. Here's their request. And now, Lord... Look upon their threats. Obstacle, right? And grant, that's a key word. They're asking for something they don't have that only God can give. Grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Now, some of your translations may say courage. Some of your translations may say confidence. That's because this word is rather nuanced. Boldness, courage, confidence, they're all right because it's a, it's a blob of all this stuff together. It's, they're asking, Lord, we're asking for you to give us the assurance that we will have endurance, to give us the courage to keep moving forward because if I had my way, I would say, nah, Hawaii looks a lot better than this. But we know you've called us to do a job and we're asking for you to give us the grit to keep doing it. I love that kind of prayer. That's my kind of prayer. And now, Lord, look upon the threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. We're not looking for an easy way out. We're looking for grit, courage, while you, God has to do this here, while you stretch out your hand to heal Where does that power come from? God. God's power. And signs and wonders are performed through the name of your Holy Spirit. More demonstrations of God's power. That's what they're asking for. And look at this. What God does is a confirmation to their request. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. An earthquake perhaps? God literally answered their prayer with an affirmation. Yes, Peter, James, John, all of you praying together, I will give you the assurance you need that my power cannot be thwarted. I will do what I said I will do. And then it finishes. Look what they did. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. They kept running God's race. All they needed was the assurance that God will do what he said he will do and he has the power to carry it out. 
The scriptures are written for this purpose, to develop in you gutsy, godly grit. When really weak in ourselves and conscious of that weakness, we are in the state, the state of mind and the posture of heart, just like I've been telling you, we're in that state of mind suited to the manifestation of the power of God. What's he saying? You have to be weak before you can have the power of God in your life. When emptied of ourselves, we're filled with God. Those who think they can change your own hearts, I can handle this addiction on my own. No, you can't. Those who think they can atone for their own sins, good luck with that. Those who think they can subdue the power of evil in their own souls or in the souls of others, who feel able to sustain themselves under affliction, it's about willpower, God leaves them to their own resources. You think you can do it? Fine. Show me. But when they feel and acknowledge their weakness, God communicates to them divine strength. If Paul were reading this, he would stand up and applaud. And he would probably yell out this, which Paul wrote, 2 Corinthians 12. Paul would say, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and in hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Do you get what he's saying? If you think you're tough, you will never know the power of God. It's only when you posture yourself, Lord, I have nothing. I can't do this race. That's when he'll start to say, now you're ready. <laughs> 